what is up guys welcome back to the channel guys we are here back with some more rally uh forgot to check out this video how do wrc and rally works now i seen rally it's one of those things where i'm like i gotta get there i gotta get there and i feel like the old school rally different different with the jumps the the crowds Everything was just different about it, but we were about to check it out, see how it works. Y'all hit that subscribe button. And let's see, I forgot who sent me this, but I appreciate the recommendation because I did ask for it. Monte Carlo, home of the rich, the famous, and the Monaco Grand Prix, F1's most iconic motor race. As the cars complete a lap of this circuit, they'll pass by another significant landmark, Casino oh, Square. Nice. This is also a key location in the world of motorsport, as the traditional starting point of the most varied, demanding and fearsome competition you'll ever see, the World Rally Championship. If you've not watched rallying before, you're in for a treat, and today we'll cover the basics so that you know what to expect when the cars go off-road. Let's start with the basics. Rallying is a form of motorsport where drivers compete against the clock, and is unlike anything you've seen before. In Formula 1 oh, you see cars good. battling against each other on a racetrack, but in rally, the cars compete on the public roads in a point-to-point -point format. Drivers oh. don't battle and overtake one another as that would be too dangerous. Instead, they race against the clock. Each driver sits off about a minute nice. or two apart, giving each other enough space to go flat out through the narrow roads. Every rally is split up into a number of stages, and your time across all of them is added up and compared against the rest of the field. Now y'all gotta let me know. I feel like, I think that would be good going against the clock. Versus going against other people, having to worry about them, somebody telling, you know, hitting you in the back, or the, you know what I'm saying? So, I just feel like going against the clock, going to get, basically going to get yourself, I would rather that. I wouldn't mind that. Of course, you got to stick those landings on those, when you take flight, um, those corners, those turns, still would be difficult, you know, but they... Rally has some difficult roads. They have some. Their their courses are difficult, though. A rally will often take place across a number of days instead of a few hours, like in Formula One. Hmm. Another thing that's different to Formula One are the cars, which are both simple and complex at the same time. The key takeaway here is that rally cars are highly modified versions of the road cars you see at home. Hmm. That's always been a core part of rallying for well over 50 years. More often than not, the only component that carries over from the road car is the shell. Everything else is toughened up, lightened, or swapped out entirely to improve performance. The most obvious change from the outside, of course, are those massive rear wings, as well as the yeah. widened bodywork. I guess they're like, hey, your car could do the same thing, just don't try this at home. If you're this all helps with the car's aerodynamics, giving it more downforce for cornering and better control over jumps. Under the hood, there's a lot going on too. WRC cars use very tough suspension systems to deal with all of the bumps in the road and are converted to all-wheel drive for nice. better performance in low-grip situations. In 2022, the top class of WRC also introduced hybrid power, just like in Formula 1. That was when the smooth. cars break, they store energy into a battery, and the driver uses that energy oh. to go faster. Despite all this fancy technology and Dang. incredible performance, however, the cars are still road legal, and if you're in a country where they're racing, you may even see them in traffic between stages. Wow. <laughs> in most forms of motorsport, the racing happens in a contained and dedicated area. While the layouts may change, most racetracks come in two flavors, closed off circuits and street courses. WRC is far more varied however, touring the world and giving drivers new and unique challenges with every event. The season starts at Monte Carlo, but not on the streets Monte of the Grand Carlo. Prix. Instead, the rally cars head up the mountains to tackle narrow roads full of snow and ice. Ooh. From there, the crews head to the high-speed snowy forests of Sweden, the patchy concrete and tarmac of Croatia, and then the brutally tough gravel of Portugal, Sardinia, and the safari rally of... Okay, that's a... Uh... Wow, because somebody sent me... I don't know, oh, well, this is a 2022 caliber, 2023. I think they just had a rally, a WRC event, in Portugal a couple of weeks ago, I want to say, because I've, I've seen it, it popped up on my, popped up on my home screen on YouTube, so, this, I mean, this schedule is still kind of legit, <laughs> still, because the Portugal one just happened, so that means the Sardinia is coming up, I don't know, I don't know, I might have to, I might have to look it up after this and see 
Let's see if the the twenty twenty three schedule is still kind of the same. But uh, Sweden, I like Sweden, uh, Croatia, and Finland. I like those three. I've seen those three, so I'm gonna have to check out these other ones. That's no different. That's no different. But that gravel is so different. But really, that tarmac, that tarmac is different because that Finland one I seen that was different. Well, really, with Croatia too. So. <laughs> But those two were different. Those two were good. Those were good ones. Kenya. Throughout his season, the drivers will have faced every condition there is to offer, taking on tight hairpins, massive jumps, dense fog, heavy rain, dark nights, and so much more. It takes a special kind of talent to succeed in such a challenging environment, which is why the best are the ones who are brave, adaptable, and true masters of driving. Throughout the WRC's 50-year history, many oh, legends man. have taken to the wheel. Colin McRae is a name you oh may have heard of. Goodness. Tommy Mackinnon too. Going further back, you have drivers like Walter Rowe. Let's go back and see. I might have to see some of these guys. Colin McRae is a name you may have heard of. Sebastian, oh, nine world titles. Another, so, so two Sebastians? Nine to eight title. That's, that's insane. Man, those guys driving, driving. Because look at everybody else. The majority got one champion world title. That's good, and I believe that's the French, French flag. So, but Finland, Finland got a good amount of drivers out there. France got two, and so French and Finland got some drivers. Tommy Mackinnon too. Going further back, you have drivers like Walter Roll and Hannu Mikola, who tamed the wild beasts of the 1980s, and the modern era has its fair share of talent different. too. Sebastian Loeb is the most successful rally driver of all time, Loeb. winning nine world championships. In recent years, he's oh tried my. his hand at rallycross, Dakar. Hold up, before they get to all it, what he tried. This man that won nine consecutive years? That's insane. This is a goat. I might have to check out his driving stuff. Maybe I was checked. Maybe I have seen him. I just didn't know Winning nine him. world championships. Have to see. In recent years, he's tried his hand at Rallycross, Dakar, Extreme E, and many other things. And in 2022, he makes a return to Rally with the M Sport Ford team. He'll be competing part-time, wow. but expect him to be fighting for victories. If Sebastian Loeb is like the Michael Schumacher of WRC, Sebastian Auger can be considered the sport's Lewis Hamilton. An eight-time world champion, <laughs> Auger is considered a complete package, somebody who rarely makes mistakes and knows the right balance between risk and wow. reward. Like Loeb, he'll also be racing part-time, but expect his Toyota to be on the podium whenever he competes. They differ. Behind these two heroes lie so. several other drivers who are equally as brave and talented behind the wheel. The field as a whole is incredibly close, with days of rallying often decided by seconds. Okay, both Sebastian. Okay, I was about to... So one drive that Ford Puma and the other one drive that Toyota. Wow. Some drivers will be experts on gravel, others on tarmac, and some are all-rounders who will take on anything you throw at them. These drivers are not alone on the road, however, with their co-drivers playing just as big a role in their success. Every motorsport is a team effort, however in most, there's only one person in the car. Rallying is different as you have two drivers, each with an important role to play. While the main driver does the obvious, the co-driver has their eyes on the road ahead, using a complicated language of commands to allow the driver to go mm. flat out. Corners go by so quickly on these narrow roads that drivers need a fast and clear way of understanding what's ahead of them. And unlike in circuit racing, you can't learn hundreds of kilometers of public road that easily. Together with a co-driver, they develop a pace note system, which describes every oh. upcoming corner with only two to three words. Let's look at an example. 200, four right into three left long, hairpin right, rocks outside. Oh the 200 goodness. is the distance to the next set of turns, usually in meters. Each corner is given a rating depending on how tight it is. A 1 would be a fairly tight turn to take, whereas a 6 would be a bit faster. So basically, the second driver got the toughest job in the world. The guy in the passenger seat job is tougher than the guy actually driving. Because, I mean, both of them are a tough job. They, you know, yeah, definitely seem like it take a lot of skill. I don't know how, how long it would take you to you know be at that level, but... That's a lot. That's a lot. In this case, we have a four, which isn't too tricky, and goes wow. to the right. Into tells the driver that the next turn comes up straight away, so they need to be ready while taking the four right. This is a longer corner, followed mm. by a tight hairpin. There's rocks on the outside, so the driver needs wow. to be careful. 
That's impressive. Even with a set of detailed Very notes, impressive. crashes can happen. Big ones. A driver can push too hard, mishear a note, or the co-driver could call Ooh. out the wrong number by mistake. The cars are very strong and driver safety is pretty good these days, but there's a good chance that car won't be moving after a big shunt. Yeah, yeah this is tough for both of them, you know, I, but that, that co-driver, that is different. Did this man just wreck? Driver safety is pretty good these days, but there's a good chance that car won't be moving after a big shunt. If a car takes damage, however, the rally isn't over. Some damage might be fixable on the road, or the car can limp home to the service park. When they get there, a team of mechanics work quickly to repair as much as they can. Mm. A damaged car can still compete, and even if it can't oh, win the overall goodness. rally, some teams will try to win the power stage at the end of the rally. More on that later. Each rally is a week-long event with multiple challenges presented every day. Tuesday and Wednesday is normally when the recce happens. Here, the crews will head out to the stages in normal road cars and map out each route. This is where they'll come up with their pace notes, or improve oh, their ones from yeah. last year if the roads are the same. On Thursday you have the That's shakedown, where teams can warm up on a short stage and refine their setups. This is like free practice in Formula 1. In the evening you then have the ceremonial start, and maybe one or two stages of the actual rally. The rally proper begins on Friday. Each day has a number of stages where the teams will go flat out to set the best times. In between these stages, the drivers will take the cars on public roads to get to the next destination. They're not racing here though, just getting from A to B. This repeats on Saturday and Sunday, with the final stage of the rally being a power stage, giving up bonus points for the fastest times. After a few stages, the rally cars head back to the service park for repairs and setup changes. But on the road, the crews are on their own. If there's an issue with the car, they'll have to fix it themselves, meaning both the driver and co-driver need to be expert mechanics as well. They'll also need to do quick tire changes if there's a puncture, which leads into the overall strategy of a rally. I, I, I honestly think these guys don't get paid enough. Because I've seen F1, F1 make a lot of money. And I don't know all the behind the scenes, you know. F1 got some, Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen. They got some good drivers. But that's, you know, the most I've seen them do is just drive. Rally? I didn't know they had to do basically be their own mechanic and change. I'm not saying it ain't, you know, it's not that difficult to change tire, but the fact that they have to do it themselves, this is different. This is not. This is like no other. It's like in the lane of its own. Because if you if you watch even NASCAR, you see they not change. They not getting out changing their own tires. Those drivers are not doing all that. Like these drivers have a lot more responsibility. That's insane. Point to point seems simple in theory, the the but game, look beneath though. the surface and there's a lot to think about. First off, the road evolves over time, and what you drive on the recce may feel different when you compete for the best time. At the start of a rally the roads can be dusty as nobody's raced on them yet. The first few cars will essentially sweep the road during the runs, making it a bit faster for the cars behind. After a while the roads will then start to deteriorate. Drivers will kick up mud, dirt and stones from clipping the edges of the road, and on gravel and snow rallies, they'll form deep ruts as everyone tries to find the fastest line. Learning to read the road ahead is a key mm, skill, tough. with drivers adjusting on the fly and deciding how much of a risk they're willing to take. This also plays into the tyre strategy. Tyres aren't as sensitive as they are in Formula 1, as they need Whoa. to do hundreds of kilometres a day on both the stages and the public roads. You have tyre compounds of course, where you choose between performance and durability, but you also need to consider how many spare tyres you bring. Do you go safe with two and deal with the extra weight on the car, or take a risk and only bring one? Mm. There's a lot to think about as you try to gain valuable championship points. The lowest combined time, time across all of the stages determines the winner, and the point system is fairly straightforward. You get 25 for a win, 18 for a second, and so on, same as in Formula 1. On top of this there are bonus points given out for the power stage, 5 for the winner and more for the rest of the top 5. The manufacturer's championship is a little more complicated. Teams nominate three of their crews before an event, and the fastest two of those score points. Some drivers are full-time, and some are part-time, whereas in Formula 1 the same two drivers enter every race. Now that you know the basics, I'm sure you're excited to get involved. Every day's action is live on WRC+, their official streaming service. You get live maps, onboards, and commentary all the way through. Rallies are also shown on various TV networks across the world. Here's a list, and I'll link it in the description. Due to the long nature of a WRC, I didn't see the US on there. boards and through. commentary all the way through. Rallies are all. Oh, ah, we just got Latin.
I'm gonna see. I I know we have different ESPNs and uh, Fox Sports and some other international sports channels. I'm gonna see. Also I shown on various TV the networks website. across the world. Here's a list, and I'll link it in the description. Due to the long nature of a WRC event, highlights are often a great way to catch up. Red Bull TV is my go-to place for this. They have a 30-minute show every day that rounds up all the action. WRC also have a lot of content on their YouTube channel. It's a great place to visit if you want the basics or want to know more about the sports rich history. Speaking of YouTube, if you have any questions about WRC or just want to chat about the sport, Michael give me up in the comments Lake below. A it's a great series to follow and completely different to Formula 1. Well worth checking out. Yeah, this was good. This was good. Very detailed video. Yeah, PJ Turney. Y'all make sure y'all check out PJ Turney. Subscribe to the channel. I'll put the link in the description. But not nah, this. This is tough. This is tough. I, me personally, you know, I can drive. I like. I have a sports car. Pretty fast, you know. I have a a challenge Dodge Challenger. But this job. I don't know how long it would take to even be in this profession to be a professional driver in WRC. Rally is different. Like I've seen NASCAR, I've seen F1, Formula One, and you know I'm sure it takes time. You know those guys start off young, you know, but this is different. This is different because I never, I would never think you know having a co-driver too, and the co-driver's job is. Pretty much just as hard, if not harder, than the drivers. Like that is tough. Like you, you really gotta love this stuff. And I can see the, the yeah, this, it's a passion. You really gotta have true passion to do certain things, man. But this is, this is different. This sport is different. I thought F one was different when I checked that. This is totally. This is a different type of man. But I'm gonna be checking out some more. You know. Like I said, I got a fast, I got a, I, I ain't even try sports mode on my car yet. You know, I don't mind going fast, but ain't nowhere to go fast. Ain't trying to risk nothing, you know. And I'm no pro at all. I'm no pro, but I enjoyed this. I hope y'all did as well. Appreciate the recommendation. Y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Send down more recommendations. Hey, y'all be blessed. Be the best to be you. I'm out.